everyone. Good morning. Welcome back to another edition of the show. It is February 8th, 2022. And I'm joined once again by Kyle Klingman up in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Took the day off yesterday. I think he was just lounging around doing nothing. I'm not really sure. But he's back. <laughs> Kyle, how you feeling? Doing good, man. This is Oklahoma State, Iowa week coming into the bout at the ballpark. And I love this rivalry. I, uh, it's the one I circle every year to, to watch and make sure I'm tuned into, but this is, this is fun for me. This is the, this is the one. Yep. Is there, is there a name like Bedlam is Oklahoma, Oklahoma state. Is there any name that they use or that encompasses Iowa versus Oklahoma state pandemonium? Could be one. (sighs) It should be. Yeah. I don't know that there is one, but maybe you can create one right now with our guest. Okay, yeah, and speaking of our guest, um, he's, he's done plenty of Oklahoma State-Iowa matches. It is two-time NCAA champ, world silver medalist, Royce, the most entertaining man in the world, Alger, coming to us from Des Moines, Iowa, I would presume. Ah, oh, the yeah. crowd goes crazy! Des Moines, Iowa, right here in the just sunny Des Moines. Just beautiful. You got some cold down there for once. I was kind of glad to see that, that those snow gods come down your way a little bit. Got a little cold, didn't it? The snow gods, the ice gods, more than anything, were down here uh, late last week, but they have left. But they have left with us a water boil. You guys don't know about it. We've got a, a water boil going in effect, so I don't have my dang coffee right now because I didn't have water to make it with. Although I had one this morning, so I'm doing okay. But if I if I slack, just jump at me and and let you know. I'll I'll pick it up. But I, you know. So you have to boil your water now because of what the ice permeated the the water the cisterns or something. I, I don't know. I I believe it was human error is what I'm what I'm understanding from the the. I would say the radio, but I don't listen to stuff on the radio. But what I, what I've consumed, um, information, not consume the water. But yeah, that it's you either got to boil it or get bottled water, and we got a bunch of bottled water at the house. Wow. So. All right. Yeah, but hopefully it's over today. But you know, it, it makes things a little bit of a pain in the ass, but. Not, not too bad. So how's everything um, in Des Moines, Royce? How do you feel this week? Um, does this week get you amped up? Well, I'll tell you what. Historically, you know, you know our situation. You know, but I've been on teams. I've been coaching, and I've been on, you know, I sit on the bench with the, with the guys. And, you know, Oklahoma State's the team that's come in and snapped winning streaks. They've came in and, and – and caused derision. We've set records there at Gallagher, where there was, uh, you know, you could only you could only see the mat. You know, people surrounded it. Um, the tradition it goes back to even Gable. You know, when they started calling them Okies. You know, and uh, I I remember. I'm going to regale this right now. Why 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 I remember it? Yeah. Why I'm thinking of it. My very first experience, I was a redshirt freshman, um, and Rico Chipparelli had redshirted the same year I did because he wrestled as a true freshman. So we rode in the back of a – we had a mattress in the back of a truck, and we drove down to Stillwater for the meet. I um, mean, this can be looked up if you want, but Gable had given the team over to Jay Robinson at the time. Okay. These are, this is like historical stuff here. And so Robinson was the head coach, and Gable was taking time off to, to, to coach the Olympic guys. When we, were out, we get down to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and it is an absolute just beat down. They beat us 21 to 6. And yeah. I'm sleeping. Uh, so I go out that night to Eskimo Joe's and just – tumbleweeds and have a great time. But we get back to um, the hotel. We're right outside the real, at the time, there was one really nice hotel in town. That's where we stayed. The, our team did. Well, I slept in the back of this truck with Rico. Six in the morning, Gables died of the truck. He got us up and had the whole team. And we went outside and hand fought in that red, the, you know, they got red clay down there for grass. Yeah. We hand fought in their front, like, lawn and tore everything up because, you know, it was grass that they put down there, supplanted in there. It wasn't, you know. And uh, 
We hand fought. We had given made everybody work out at like six in the morning. And it was like an hour and 20 minute workout. And I was like, you know, just a pair of shorts and my tennis shoes. And, and, uh, when we got home, they sent our AD, uh, a bill for $30,000 for the, for the lawn. That's a true story. Gable talks about that. He said only the Okies would do that. Wow. So, the, the hotel sent or the school? The hotel did. The hotel did. Wow. Sent the bill for 30000 We paid it. No, we got beat bad. Then Gable took the team back over. So you can imagine that was a crazy time. I had heard uh, you know, a story like that. Yeah, keep going. I want to hear this. Yeah, so <laughs> Gable, well, what was even crazier when we were wrestling, so we were going to wrestle, we are getting ready for Oklahoma State. Jay Robinson, who lived about nine miles outside of town, brought one of his horses in and, and rode it onto the elevator, took it down to the second level. We had a horse in our, our uh, wrestling room. Come on. Swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. So he he had the cowboy hat, the stuff on. And so we went down there and, you know, Gable said, you know, this is not a game and blah, blah, blah. So he took it over as if we weren't training hard enough anyway, going, you know, probably on our seventh straight national title or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. If we weren't training hard enough. But in, in you know, the Oki – yeah, that this this rivalry is the oldest one and probably the best one. I, I don't know, like back to the nineteen thirties, but Oklahoma State and Iowa, that's that it don't get any better than that. Were you a coach or an athlete at, at this duel meet you're Both. talking about? No, I, I was I, a, a red shirt freshman. I was a young eighteen year old Royce Alger. Okay. So I rode down there, I was red shirted. Yeah. <laughs> And and uh, little, I mean, the matches were unbelievable. Jimmy Zaleski, one of our only wins, and he was on a eighty match win streak. Took Bill Dykeman down with one second left. I'm surprised they gave it to him. Like I'm going to tell you right now, um, I told Tom this. I said, "What a great duel meet with Penn State." I said, "If that was down, no good." I mean, we don't have the homers. And I always say this. I always tell Leroy, get that checkbook out. We gotta make sure that we, we get the we get the right ref for this match. But if we're wrestling down in Penn, if we're wrestling down in Stillwater, Oklahoma, and we're it's the Penn State, uh, you know, kind of like the controversy. You remember that Iowa Penn State meet? Some of those those calls they got. They gave two and they took it away, and I'm not sitting here, you know, say anything bad against the refs. But if that's down in Stillwater, Oklahoma, those call, those call, both those calls go to the home team. Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying. There's a, there's a certain, you know, whatever. I, I don't want to be like, because uh, I love Oklahoma. I, I love Oklahoma State. I want them to be competitive. John Smith is the greatest American wrestler ever. You know, that's my, that's how I feel. Yeah, and, and – I think the first Iowa Oklahoma State match I went to was at Carver, and I see you in a cowboy hat, and like not like dressed up like a cowboy necessarily, but like you came out like in your cowboy gear. Do you remember that? Oh yeah. Well, because in the crowd, if you look historically, even at Carver Hockey Arena, no, not Carver Hockey, but we wrestled them um, in Kinnick. Uh huh. There was like three. I had both my sons in cowboy hats, and I had one in Leroy Sr. There was four cowboy hats in, in Kinnick Stadium. Anytime, it's, it was more of an uh, an ode to Leroy Sr. Okay, because he always Have wore a cowboy hat. Have you ever seen him without a cowboy hat on? No. <laughs> big old br- big, big old brim um, up there in the in the stands. I told sure. Leroy when 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 Leroy went uh, senior went down. I said he's just gonna, not going to be the same. Not looking up there. So I do that kind of as a respect to him and maybe a little irony. Sure. 
<laughs> Always. Um, okay, you mentioned the one in Stillwater. I think twenty-one to six. You guys got pummeled. Do you remember uh, the flip side? Uh, Do you remember one that was like the other way? And maybe, yeah, we'll start with that. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, it, it's it's gone both. It's gone both ways. Um, especially at home, for some reason, each team just finds a way to to, to have their better matches. Uh-huh. But and and you know, then you look at. You're talking about the old days too. With you got to remember, back when I when we were growing up, or like back in the uh, late '70s, early '80s, there weren't many teams contesting. Oki State's been right there the whole way. Yeah, and and they fought. And, you know, they've got the history. What in the four? Clingley, you probably know this better than I do. They probably got what the '30s and '40s and '50s. They've got got quite a few titles yeah i don't know the numbers on yep. them but they, they got quite a few but um that's all i remember but and penn state was in there scrapping but you didn't have it, penn state was scrapping um back when i went to school but it was always you didn't see ohio state really going for national titles you didn't see a of course minnesota was not you know you had oklahoma state and they were coming hard. Uh, so. do, do you remember any big up, you know, not individuals necessarily, but any duels where you're like, we got this. And then they came and beat you or vice versa. Or Man, Oklahoma State yeah, just well, nailed it. Yeah, well, they came in. Man, I, I, I want to think, Clinton, you might be able to help me with this one. I, I want to think they came into Carver and snapped the winning streak or something that we were setting something to beat their streak. And they came in and, and won that dual meet. They came in to, to Carver and won it. And and right at the right came right down to the wire too. I mean, I remember a lot of those. And uh, uh, they were and they've had the firepower too. They you know that's where Sheets and Barnes and Kendall Cross and Kenny Monday. I mean, they've had some hammers there. So. Um, I, all I can think of, I wrestled twice down there, and in and, and uh, of course wrestled guys moving up. People, I remember my junior year, they moved Greg Lanham up, you know, and he was ranked number one, and I was ranked number one, you know. So stuff like that was happening. I mean, that those those dual meets between those two teams are are you know win at all cost, you know. Um, yeah, move, just moving people around and and having the always being in the mix. I mean, what's Oklahoma State rank now? I I, I don't I I I'm I'm assuming they're down a little bit because uh um uh you know I don't know the status and maybe you can weigh in on that Ferrari. You know that's probably a whole nother greater show. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean that's clearly unfortunate one. For the t- one for the individual, right? Like it's health, but it sounds like he's on the road to recover. I don't know exactly where he's at, but I did hear he was on the bench recently. And two, obviously, that's a big blow to to your team. You've got a returning national champion out of the lineup. That that definitely hurts. And the Hawks, right? They're missing Spencer Lee. Like it's it's uh well, I'll tell you what. During sides. that Penn State meet, that Penn State meet, we weren't just missing Lee. We were missing you know the guy the Ayala, you know the kid yeah. that the, the kid that. Yeah, I mean that would have been really unbelievable, you know, just even to come down and get a tie or whatever. But the way it was, but no, Oklahoma State always take my hat off when they're in town. Like this this weekend, I'll be down there. I'll be I'll have a cowboy hat. I'll be down on the field. Heck yeah, I'll be going. Well, I got USA Wrestling in in the end. My team going. Hey, um. You know, like historically, you know, you talk about Iowa and they like they're hand fighters and they're physical and they're tough and and they they wear you. Historically, Oklahoma State's slick and they like elbows and they like to wrestle from space. But I feel like maybe that's more like your era when you were competing. I feel like maybe they were here and maybe they they've they've come cl- or even overlapped in some cases, like. You know, Iowa can wrestle slick. They have some guys that can be slick. And Oklahoma State has some guys that can maybe just be gritty and tough. Or maybe all – I just feel like 
as time goes on, they're marching more towards being a lot closer. Would you feel like that's fair to say? Yeah. Well, I think everybody's so physical anymore. And, and, and I, I, you know, when I keep looking back, you know, I got, you think about a guy like, you know, I think about freshmen, you know, man, when's the last time I saw somebody like Spencer Lee? Man, that's new, you know, but you got, you know, then you think back, you know, well, Randy Lewis was a, a Spencer Lee, you know, making Olympic and world teams. I mean, Randy Lewis made a world Olympic team in college. Mary Davis was a world uh, uh, Olympic silver in you know, Barry Davis is one of my favorite guys of all time, but yeah, I'll get back to your question. But he lived in the dorm all five, all of his years at really? Iowa. Yeah, he lived down the hall. So when he won his, Olymp his Olympic silver, <laughs> I had a 10 speed in the dorms, and they were huge, drafty, big old uh, hallways. So yeah. I'd ride my 10 speed down to the N100s. I was at the C100s just to go look at it. I'd walk in there and look at his medal. He had it on the wall, and he lived all four, all, all of his career. So he, I think he redshirted one year for the Olympics. Well, so five years in the dorms, and also, God bless his heart, he was a senior, fifth year senior. While I was a freshman, um, I, uh, I used to, um, I got kicked out of the dorms my second year there. Just of course I threw you a, did. Well, I threw a big beach party. I ordered a bunch of sand because I didn't have any money to go down to Florida. Invited a bunch of my buddies. I charged it to uh, <laughs> Rodney Sullivan's dad was the head of the Teamsters. He had one of those ha those hats on. He, he he had the guy come over. We poured three tons of sand. But you know, I got pulled. I threw a huge party. Got kicked out. And I didn't have any place to go. And now my dad says, "You ain't coming home." So I I lived in a tent. So Barry Davis would come out and get me up for. Um, like American Lit, he'd come out and bang on my, he'd bang on my tent. <laughs> hey, 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 bro, it's time to go. Time to go. Time to go. Gotta go. Come on. You lived in a tent right where, outside the dorms? Where'd he got? I lived in a tent from, well, spring break until the end of the year. How long is that? A month or two? It's cold. Yeah, a month or two. Yeah. Well, you just throw a couple parties out there. You don't have the... You don't have the cleanup you do because you just you're outside. <laughs> I swear to God, that's a true story. Oh man, I didn't have anywhere to go. Here's the difference between you want to talk about difference and the yeah. dichotomy of eras. When I left home, the old man meant it. I don't want you know you're not coming back here. You know, take any anything with me from him. I did. I you know you were on your own, and. You know, I, I hate to be one of them guys when I was your age, you know. I remember my old man one time, he came up to my room. He goes, how old are you, son? And I said, 17, Dad. He said, when I was your age, I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was like that back when you were gone. You were gone. And, you know, I have a great story about Gable when he got inducted in the uh, the the Fila. Uh -huh. I don't mean to take the horn from you, but yeah, go for it. We were out in London when he got in the Fila Hall of the Olympic Hall of Fame. I was with Ryan Morningstar. And we were drinking. I was drinking mimosas. He was drinking orange juice. We were at his hotel. It was eight in the morning. <laughs> it was eight, it was early. <laughs> I think I saw you out there, didn't I? London. I, I was there. Yeah, I think I saw you. Yeah. London, so yeah, 2012, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Novogratz, we were running hard. Yeah. And I said, Gable, you know what? I just want no no BS. Why did you – you left at 49. Think about that. Yeah. And Gable said, I'll tell you why. Because one time after practice, it was before the Midlands, I had a parent come in and tell me, what my son, what his son was going was he going to make? And I just shook my head and I agreed with everything they said. He said, "My son's not going to make it for Midlands. We're going to get the weight down after the Midlands." And Gable said, "I just packed up my stuff. I wrote some notes down." And then he said he went to the um, Hilltop Bar. He's a little honky talk on the way home. He never had more than 
like one or two. He said he had three or four. He had his wife come pick him up. I don't think he's, that's ever happened before. Uh-huh. And he made his mind up. He was going to, that way he was done. Wow. Because he had an athlete. And that's the difference. People, parents now got money. You know? Yeah. And, and a little more control over the kids. You know? And so you, you are going to see some unbelievable, because the money's out there for the coaching. I mean, in as soon as you get the coaching, you know, I mean, I, I, I mean, look at my situation at, at Titan Mercury. I get to go work. I still get to go work with some of these high level guys, and right. you know, money's the reason for that too. So it's, it can be good or bad. You know, you know that. Yep. Yep. Uh, what? Yeah. In, in all the time that you've ta- been a part of this rivalry, seen it as a kid, whatever. Has it ever been anywhere else than on the campus of Iowa or the campus of Oklahoma State? Well, campus. Yeah, including the football well, stadium, obviously. We're, we were the ones that set the record with the, the Kinnick Stadium. We had yep. 44,000, and I can guarantee you there was 50. Right? Yeah, that was huge. Half a stadium. Yeah, small. so, um, man, I think it was. It, it's always been down there – I can't think of it being anywhere other than Gallagher, other than, you know, yeah, you got national duels and stuff, you know, the one they used to have them up in Nebraska and stuff like that. But, no, it's pretty much been – it's pretty much been right right there in the heart of of each city. Yeah. And well, always well attended. Yeah. And we've been – we've all been spoilers to to each other, so – um, you're right. There's no other, there's no other rivalry, but of course now, but when you got, you know, how long, let me just ask you this, see how Klingman, this might be one for you. I don't hate to put you on the spot. Put on when's the last time, when's the last time Oklahoma state won it? It was 2019. Huh? 2019. Oklahoma yeah, State won the Nationals. Oh, the Nationals. Oh, Nationals. oh 2000, 2006. 2006. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, just when you got teams, it's a precursor a little bit. That When Penn State and Iowa are going off, the, the, you, those are the two teams that you know are going to win the national title. One of those two teams is, is going to collect. Likely. But it's been 2006. That's a long time for Stillwater, Oklahoma, not to have one. It's a real long time. Yeah, we'll well, we were right there for a while. Yeah. Uh, 2011. How about this? No, Worst... I do not know if it was anywhere else. Okay. Obviously, it'll be at the at the baseball stadium in Texas this, this year. That's why I, I was wondering. How about this? Worst memory for you from that duel, whether it's a, an athlete or a coach? Um... Worst memory. Uh, well, there's no duel worse than the one I had to go down and, and witness it when we got the hell beat out of us, and then I had an hour and a half workout the next day. That that yeah. takes the cake. Okay. Um, I do what I do remember them coming in, and I'm pretty close. Uh, you know, I always try to shake the. Uh, you know, I always try to shake the opposing hands when they're coming in. And, and even if they're going out, you know, whether a win or a lose. But um, I remember that year they snapped some kind of streak we had. Uh-huh. And it was John Smith and his crew. And that was a big – that was a big – that was hard on us because we were – you know, so we've been kind of snapping each other's stuff. But um, nothing – nothing beats that uh, – um, that duel, but um, I, I remember when I was a senior, they moved me up away. Um, and then Barnes up away. So I've been trying to catch, you know, an Elger Barnes matchup would have been a pretty nice thing um, in a duel, you know, but that didn't happen. But, um, you know, just to, to, to lend itself to the rivalry, uh, I tell people all the time, John's, he, Tom Brands 
should have been the first four timer. He um, he lost one zero to in, in Oklahoma City <laughs> to Kendall Cross. The semifinals. You remember that? Yeah. Is that right. Yeah. It was like the best. It's on. You can find it on YouTube. I think it's like the best one zero match I've ever seen. It was like a lot of one zero matches kind of suck to watch as a fan. This sure. one was not that way. This one no. was exciting. No, and then you know. You know, Cross gets majored sometimes in, in those matches. I remember he got teched that year, you know. By, by Tom? I think Gary and Tom both beat wow. the hell out of him one year. Yes, but. Made some adjustments. I Yeah. Well, I love, I just love anybody that wants to compete and if they get up for it. You know, I, we're pretty more steady Eddie, but I don't mind a guy that gets hot. Sure. You know, you can get, get around tur- tournament time, just get hot. You know, I was going to mention, too, one of those guys was a guy named Mark Riley. He'd get hot. And, you know, people say, well, what, you know, he wasn't an All-American his senior year. I said, yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. Would you rather place in the top six, four years in a row or just come out and win that damn thing one time? You know, at least you yeah. can say you're a national champ, you know. And I, I, I'm going to answer this question for every four-time All-American out there. If, if they can trade all four All-Americans to come in and just get hot one year and win that tournament and never place, they'll take the national title any day. I'm sure. Yeah. Because it's end game. So. Okay. All right. I, I got one more question. I think maybe Kyle's got some. But you're very – you're a pretty lighthearted guy. You're very jovial, right? Like Royce is he's that's that's the energy he brings. But you sat on the bench for a long time and you coached Iowa. And I've seen Iowa versus Oklahoma State. I've seen the Brands brothers, I've seen the Smith family and, and Perry and and Guerrero back in the day and Zach, you know, like and same with all the, the Iowa it's ten, you know, they're cordial, I'm sure, outside of this duel. But when this duel's going on, <laughs> there's no love loss. And they are Intense and sometimes barking and sometimes it's heated. Gordon, Did you get that way during this duel in general? But it maybe um, at all. No. No, no. I just was never. You know, I, I can. I have my moments, and it has to be. I'd be more individualistic with like a certain match or my guys that I work with. But I just never really got. Uh, I never really got took that. that that energy that I had when I competed, like, let's put it this way. If I have that energy like like that when I competed, I wouldn't be a coach of Titan Mercury because I'd be I wouldn't be able to drop that those th- that acrimony for you know, I gotta walk into Penn State or Ohio State or or wherever, Oklahoma State. Uh-huh. You know, I was the one to answer your question. I was the one that brought Pat Smith up and lived with me for a month. When he walked into that Iowa room, um, we were training for the 96 Olympics. Everyone stopped. And they said, well, he's with Elger. He's, I guess he's okay. <laughs> and Pat Smith, one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, Leroy coached me in the 1990. I mean, I love th- th- those people. You know what? And if you build that much up acrimony or, or disdain, you don't get to see the, the forest through the trees. You just, you know, not to mention, not to meet Leroy Sr. You know, you know he's down there screaming for Oklahoma State. But when it's over, we're going to shake hands and we're going to talk about cattle prices. <laughs> it's a true story. So I never really got into that, to be honest with you. I was sure. more... I have a dichotomy of when I competed, I was full on. But then when I was coaching or whatever, I was more of a kind of a, um, you know, I'd be real intense during the match and stuff. But I don't really take it for all. I'm a USA wrestling guy. Um, we're all trying to be better. And we're all trying to win um, world Olympic titles at the end game, you know? Yeah. Yep. And I th- I hope you got to hope your enemies are tough and are edifying for you. You know, we need Oklahoma State to get back in there kicking. 
this national tournament, we need Michigan to stand up and be counted for once in 30 mm-hmm. years. You know, we need those schools. We need those guys like St- that kid from Stanford who saved his program. It's pretty awesome. Right? Shane Griffith, We need yeah. those guys to step up. We need Cornell to develop. We need other schools to develop. You know, I, I never thought I'd be sitting there screaming against, what was it, North Carolina State or North Carolina and, during that duel? State. Yeah. Yeah, when the hell have I ever ye- yelled against them? <laughs> they were the all about it. Yeah. They were the they were they were calling for defensive falls and stuff. <laughs> you know, they want to win. So uh we, you know, let's 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 all let's all elevate. Let's Love go it. beat the Russians, you know? Yes. Yes. Take down the That's Russians. the end game for me. Let's beat Russians in big matches in, in Worlds and Olympics. Because when it really, really comes down to it, I remember Kenny Mundy told me one time I was, uh, we were out there, my first year out there, I was training. I didn't even wrestle the, the tri- trials in 88, the Olympic trials. Gable wouldn't let me. I came down there and I said, Gable's on the airline bike. And uh, I said, hey, Gable, I'm, I think I'm going to try out for the 88 Olympics. He goes, no, you're not. <laughs> And then he put his hood up, and then I went down to the Nickelodeon and got drunk for about two days. But <laughs> then, about a year or so later, I realized that I was a young, 10-foot tall and bulletproof. If Gable, if if I would have wrestled in the 88 Olympics and I got Mark Schultz when he was hot, he'd have, he'd have set me back five years, you know, because yeah. that's, that's how good Mark Schultz was. Yeah, and uh, so I listened to him, but I don't know how I got off on that tangent. But um, it's and good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm also told I told Leroy and John. I said I'll be down there with my big old, you know, my my son Eli is is in Nashville now. And he's always bringing me back cowboy hats. So I said I'll be I'll be uh, down there with the big old Stetson, and probably pointing some fingers, but. Then give him John John Smith a big hug afterwards. But uh, yeah. hopefully Pat will make it down there. I'd like to see him. I'd like you to put Pat Smith on. I, I guarantee a lot of people out here would like to see Pat Smith, uh, the very first four-timer, get out there and, and talk to him and see what he's doing. I think that's a great idea. I'm in curious. Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. Can't get better than Pat Smith. It's awesome. Right. What about you, Kyle? Yeah, well, I just – a couple notes on that. So the 1984 duel, which I love that duel. I'm glad Royce brought that up because it's an iconic meet. And to hear him talk about the, the workout in the lawn, it was actually 24 to 6. So you said 21 <laughs> Was it 24 it's to 6? <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> – What did I say? He said 21. 6. Close enough. No, I mean – Okay, because 24 it, it, to 6. Yeah. And then the yeah, next year, go ahead. so let's put, no, and then, the, so after 84, that duel, Iowa won, and then Tom Chesbrough got fired because they were like, hey, you're not winning championships. The next year, Iowa beat Oklahoma State 40 to 6 in Carver, and John Smith lost to Greg Randall, injury defaulted out because he, he separated, separated his shoulder. shoulder. Yeah. So History. It, it was, that was a bloodletting. Yeah, you guys beat them bad. You know what? Actually, actually, that beating they put on us was a great catalyst because Gable was getting – I don't want – you never want to say apathetic, but, man, when you win so much, what, what were you going for, our fifth or sixth or maybe seventh back then? Seventh? Seventh and 84, in, yeah. Okay, so seventh national title. Think about that now. Put that in perspective. You know, when we were just – our backups were, were hammers. So you just put that in perspective. We needed a good black guy. We needed someone to fight. Start winning a team time, that team going for 10 straight national titles and put that in perspective. And we won the Big Ten 25 times in a row. In yeah. a row. And we never lost the Big Ten meet for, I don't know how, what, 15 15- 15 years, we never lost a Big Ten meet until, what, 2002 or something? 
Our, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, so. It was wild, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we didn't have anybody to fight. We are fighting each other. So Oklahoma <laughs> State would step up. So I I love yeah. it that everybody's changing, changing their end game. You know? You know, I love all that all that stuff. It's great to be. Uh, it's great to be in my situation. You know, when Tom Brands came back from Iowa, you know, I I thought about coming down there and really. You know, you always think about getting back into coaching, and I never really talked to him about it. But I think he asked me one time if I what I thought if I was ever going to get back into coaching or something. I said no. Nah. I said I already made the ocean boil. I'm not willing. When you're coaching at that level, you're 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 putting in 80 hours a week, mm-hmm. and you're grinding. And you know, you want to say that's a young man's game. I don't. I don't know if it's a young man's game, but I can guarantee you, Tom Brands is is up every morning at five, and he don't sleep. He just waits. <laughs> All right, Royce. I got to close this out. I got series of five questions. It's our game called Sweat It Out. Are you ready to play? Sure. Number one. you read This isn't a drinking days. game, is it? It can be. No, no. <laughs> yeah, well, we need it to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number one. You wrestled at three different NCAA tournaments, but only faced one Oklahoma State wrestler. Name the person, year, round, and score. I would say it would be... Uh, uh, Barnes, the semifinals of the uh, national in Ames, in the semifinals, and I think it was ten to three, ten to something, ten to two, ten to three. It was uh, actually eight to two. Was it eight to two? Wah, yeah. wah, wah. Damn. Number uh, number two, what former University of Iowa wrestler is from Windsor, New York? Oh, Brad Penroth. <laughs> you got it. You got Brad it. Brad Penroth. Oh, number Windsor. three, Union Edicott. <laughs> number three, you are one of six native-born Iowans to win a medal at the Senior World Championships. Name the only one to wrestle at an out-of-state university. Holly Thompson. You got it. Man, he just he smoked that one. Man. All I right. took him to Europe one time, and then I found out about that. That's good to know. With, with Tali. There's only I six. Mean, hold, on, just, hold on. I don't need to jump in. There's only yep. six. Why don't you give him the six? Okay. How many can Royce, you name, Royce? Alger. Royce Alger. Hold on, Dan let me Gable. See if I can name <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I know you can All name right. him, Kyle. Go ahead. All right. Me and Gable, both brands, Barry Davis. Now, what you don't know is Thomas Gilman was actually born in Iowa, in Council Bluffs. So I don't know if that counts or not. It does. So native born. Actually, the brands were born in Nebraska, so it does not count. Oh, so they don't. They're not native. Mm. Not native born. They're. You know, if I would have said high school, that would have counted. But they were born in Nebraska. Wow. So if Gilman's in, the brands are out. Gilman's in that list that. already. Oh, the brands Gilman's brothers in. were born in Nebraska. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So both brands. brands. Oh, so clearly. So they're not part of the six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're well, they not. Are. No, they're not. The they brands not. brothers are not part of the six. But Gilman is right. Gilman is. Royce. Royce is. Gable is. Barry Davis is. Tolly Thompson is. And there's one more. One more. Oh man, Joe Corso. Nope, he was born in Italy, but he grew up in Iowa. Yeah, he grew up in Valley High School. He walks by my my street every now and then. He told me one day he had a world medal. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was just pinning those out. Um, he, I, he attended Northern Iowa. Oh, that's Cole's days, uh, Rob Cole's dad's days probably. Nope. No. No, that no. This was real recent. You probably on the trip. Oh, Cologne, Cologne. Yep, Joe Cologne. Got it. Joe Cologne. That's right. Wow. Number four. Number four. 
who is the most recent wrestler from Oklahoma State to medal at the World Championships? To medal? Well, that'd be Fix. Yep. Got it. He's smoking this. Number five. Who is the first Oklahoma State wrestler to win a gold medal at the World Championships, and he happened to compete in the same weight class as you? Oh, wow. World, world, you said world, uh, like a senior world? Senior world championship. I just want to clarify something. Everybody tries to get these junior worlds and this world and this one. There's only one senior world, a world medal. Senior uh, in your worlds. Yeah, senior worlds. Um, uh, he got he won a gold? Won a gold. Yep. He was the second to ever do it. God, you, got, you got Kenny Mundy down there. In the senior worlds. Yep. He's from Oregon. Oh, uh, He's from he's indigenous to Oregon. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He I, I want to uh, say Gutches. I want to say Gutches, but Gutches didn't wrestle at, at Oklahoma State. No. No. It was Fred Fozard. Oh, the Foz. I think I knew that. I, I got it. Is that it? Is yep, that everything? It. That's right. it. That's everything, Royce. We're right past time. Hey, I want to say right. we, got, we got a big crew going out to uh, the New York AC um, for uh, f- for that tournament. So we're hoping to get life into that. So b- people out there watching, you know, there's going to be quality competition. I, I don't think we're going to go to Cuba this year. So and then we got the U.S. Open coming up too. So Heck yeah. Um, look forward to seeing a lot of guys that tune into your show and you know, keep training, man. There's a lot of opportunity. We'll hopefully get get our trips going back to um, Iran as soon as they figure out this visa thing. I know we wrestle this Saturday, right? We wrestle yep. Saturday and in, in there's a myriad of different different guys from different countries, right? Yep. That are wrestling. Absolutely. So Bader, always appreciate it. Klingman, catch you on the flip. I will see you guys down. In, are you going to Texas, Klingman? I'm not. The The Texas crew will be in Texas. The Iowa crew will be in Iowa. Yeah, so we me we and Hamilton like are staying here. We don't let Klingman in. Hamilton's welcome, but he's not coming. Klingman's just going <laughs> to let him in the state. <laughs> Royce, All right, always guys. a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Dilly, dilly. Right, uh, and uh, we'll see dilly. you down in, in Arlington this weekend. All right, guys. All See right, you guys. thanks so much. Have a great day. Thanks. Man, always, always entertaining and a pleasure to talk to Royce Alger. Uh, I, I, you know, I'd heard that story about training outside after they got their ass kicked by Oklahoma State. It's good to hear like the actual story. And yeah, usually the embe- yeah. I mean, he said twenty-one to six. Usually embellished the other way, but he <laughs> was missing out on three points. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Um. Yeah, but that's going to do it. That's going to do it for today's show. We're super excited for this weekend, Oklahoma State versus Iowa. If you can get to Arlington, Texas, please come be a part of it. If not, you can watch it live right here on Flow Wrestling. So for Kyle Klingman, I'm Mark Bader. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.